A lot has happened to the X-Men, in general, but particularly over the past decade or so. A lot of mutants have had their crack at being a part of the mutant race's premier superhero team, and we're going to talk about them. Now, the mutant armor isn't a new X-Men member in the regular 616 universe, but recently, as in this year, 2024, the year of our lord, thanks to the newly formed Marvel Ultimate Universe and Peach Momoko, we are getting a new interesting take on her character. Ultimate X-Men number one stars Hizako Ichiki, aka Armor, as she first uncovers her mutant abilities. Now, first of all, Peach Momoko sets this story in Japan, and the whole thing is just this mix of cute, but also very heavy and super cool. What's interesting about this take on Armor, and possibly the other mutants going forward for the Ultimate Universe, is how their abilities appear to be a bit more magically oriented. In the story, her powers appear to be almost supplied by a strange amulet she's given by a friend who then lost his life. Life. Now, that's just me speculating. After a shadowy presence who people are guessing may be the Shadow King appears to Hizako, she is riding her bike away from where they met and her power activates as a car nearly hits her and her enormous armor stops it dead in its tracks. Definitely give that first issue a read if you get a chance, cause I glossed over a lot. Next up, Joanna Cargill, like a lot of the X-Men, started off as a villain. She ran away from home after her mutant powers activated and she caused the passing of her not so great dad in self defense. From there, she would join Apocalypse's Alliance of Evil, which is a silly name, where she would do battle with the X-Men. Now gifted with skin that is extremely strong and resistant to attacks, Frenzy became an X-Men member in 2011 in X-Men Legacy number 250. Her steel hard skin is so strong that it has only ever been penetrated by adamantium. She is also highly resistant to extreme hot and cold as well as radiation and she can withstand high impact forces like Cyclops optic beam or a punch from She-Hulk. Now speaking of She-Hulk, a byproduct of Frenzy's power is that she has super strength as well, enough to lift around 25 to 75 tons. And she can punch Jennifer Walters back if she really wants to. Frenzy has gone toe to toe with Rogue, arguably one of the most powerful X-Men, and she was classified as a level 6 threat by Cable, who helped hone her exceptional skills as a hand to hand combatant. Now going back, if you need more incentive to read that new Ultimate X-Men, then I I shall give you some. At the end of the very first issue, the cover of the second issue, which I haven't actually been able to read yet, features a completely new character who goes by the hero name, Maystorm. Now Maystorm is confirmed to have weather abilities and is clearly inspired by the revolutionary Storm from Ultimate Black Panther. Inspired by, but this is a wholly new character with their own unique design, and it seems the character will be joining both Armor and a few other characters that I'm going to talk about in a minute as the first new Ultimate X-Men team. Momoko created this character for last year's new Champions variant cover, but Maystorm will finally debut in Ultimate X-Men number 2 of this year. Similar to Frenzy, Quentin Choir used to be a sort of villain back in the new X-Men. He spent his earlier years being an absolutely despicable kid who I always kind of wanted to just like kick in the shins. He was trying to be an anarchist leader of mutants and ended up doing more harm than good. After the schism of the X-Men, Wolverine took took him to the school that he opened up. In a relatively short amount of time, Quentin became a more well-rounded character, and now he is someone I think is actually kind of cool. He still stayed a bit of a rebel and a narcissistic jerk, which you would think would make people hate him, but when he stops trying to cause anarchy, these traits end up becoming a fun aspect of his personality. Now on Krakoa, he's back to annoying Wolverine and being pretty insufferable, but it's to a point where you kind of love him for it, maybe just a little bit. What's a little bit less fun is is that recently, Quentin got his head lopped off and placed in an Orcus container designed to make use of mutant body parts by Sabretooth. Now he recently called in the Exiles for help using his powers, so we shall see where that goes. Okay, I hope y'all don't mind, but I've got another of the new Ultimate X-Men that I'm going to talk about, and their name is Nico Minoru. Now this is where things get really interesting and leads me to believe even more that these new X-Men will find some of their origins being influenced by magic and mysticism. Nico is a Japanese magical hero who uses the powerful Staff of One, and it's very interesting because on Earth 616, Minoru is not a mutant at all. In normal canon, she is a descendant of a magical family who are part of a cult. Nico steals her parents' staff after finding out that they are part of this cult, and she uses it alongside the team of teenagers known as the Runaways. Now, with full transparency, it is unclear yet if Momoko will be retconning Nico into being a 
mutant, or if the blending of magic and mutation in Ultimate X-Men will see her magical bloodline coming into play, but she does appear to be a part of this new team of X-Men that is forming, which is something I am excited to see play out. Next up, Monet St. Croix has an interesting past, and her family is a big part of that. Her brother is an incredibly powerful bad dude who trapped her in a different form where she is known as Penance. As Penance, she had diamond skin, a telepathic resistance, and super sharp claws. M can even combine with her younger siblings, Claudette and Nicole, but on her own, Monet is essentially a near perfect being. All her physical and mental skills are greater than the natural physical limits of peak humans, including her intuition and her genius level intellect. She can fly at supersonic speeds by sheer force of will, she can read minds, project her thoughts into the minds of others, and defensively mask her mind against telepathic intrusion, and has even displayed some telekinesis. M or Penance became a part of the X-Men in 2013 in X-Men Volume 4, Number 7. Okay nerds, I have one more Ultimate X-Men to talk about, and then I promise we will keep talking about actual 616 heroes. Peach Pomoko's design sheets have also included two new mutants, Mori and Natsu, whose origins have not really been revealed at all, and we don't know much more than their names and their designs. However, the internet has still learned some things from that alone. The two biggest things of note about the information we have is that one of the names, Natsu, means summer in Japanese, and one of these new mutants has one blindfolded eye and one red eye, which is under some kind of visor device thing. Now Summer, as you might know, is a big name in the X-Men world, and with the red eye and all that jazz, fans believe that the character of Natsu could be a version of Cyclops or Scott Summers, or maybe a character at least inspired by Cyclops, although the design is different enough that the character will definitely stand as their own person. To be honest, that whole one eye thing is also kind of giving me Cable vibes, but I have no idea how that would even work, so for now, we're sticking with possibly Cyclops. Maybe. Now although he first appeared in 2007 and was briefly on the X-Men in 2009, as a 2018 recruit to the X-Men and X-Men Red number 4, Gentle is someone I kinda just love talking about, so I'm including him on the list. Gentle's mutant ability is Muscle Mass Expansion, which allows him to increase his size and strength almost instantly. He's done battle against a Sentinel and his strength is said to rival Colossus's, with his resting strength increased every time he uses his powers. Gentle is a very strong and powerful mutant, but the catch is that he only uses his powers in emergencies. Because of his poor treatment he suffered as a child, Gentle suffers great pain and seizures. To help his condition, Gentle's entire body was covered with vibration Vibranium tattoos in Wakanda to prevent him from overexerting, and they essentially keep him alive. On top of that, Gentle has pacifist beliefs, but his calm, peaceful demeanor should not fool anyone because Gentle has used his abilities to halt the One Sentinel from destroying the Xavier Institute, and he's such a cool character. A listed X Men member since 2017, Inc. sets himself apart from anyone else on this list by having the unique distinction of being a normal human being who received his powers through being tattooed by a mutant. Basically, the mutant who was the giver of his tattoos imbued those tattoos with powers. But the coolest thing about these powers is that they change into whatever tattoo he chooses to use. That's probably the worst way to explain it, so let me give some examples. Ink can make others who touch him extremely sick using a biohazard symbol tattoo that he received on his hand. He used this one on some cops who tried to arrest him in a tattoo shop when he first showed up. He gained superhuman strength from a tattoo that mimics Colossus's Osmium metal skin. Two lightning bolt symbols on his temples give him low level telepathy. He's got a tattoo of wings for flight, an explosion that lets him explode stuff, and a caduceus symbol that lets him heal others, among other tattoos. But the real show of how powerful he can be came when he got the Phoenix symbol as a tattoo that actually gave him Phoenix powers, which is nuts. His Phoenix Force symbol tattoo allowed him to defeat the Y Men, and he keeps all these tattoos able to use whichever one he needs in the moment. It's awesome. But last on our list today is Old Man Logan. Now, most of you know this Logan from the amazing Old Man Logan story and reality, where basically everything is ruined. The villains rule over everything with an iron fist in this wasteland. That is a whole story that we have talked about tons of times. But after the events of Secret Wars in 2015, crotchety old Logan made his way to the Prime 616 universe when Maine Wolverine had bit the dust. Temporarily, of course. Old Man Logan's 
stepped in and sort of not really took over his place. Now this Logan didn't have the same berserker rage and he was much wiser. The main difference was he didn't fly off the handle as often. He didn't go off on his own and do things that may have put his team in danger and his biggest accomplishment may have been wiping out both the evil Hulk from his own world and another evil Hulk, Maestro in Earth Prime. Unfortunately, old man Logan finally went to the afterlife in 2019 back in his home reality. Okay, that's all the mutants I have for today. Thank you, goodbye. My name is Adam Andrews. Thanks for watching your top 10 nerds. Stay safe and I'll catch you nerds on the flippy flop. Peace out.